Greetings, friends. It is I, Riku Khan, and welcome to the finale of my console version of my video games collection. I'm debating whether or not doing a PC episode, but that's for another time. And well, today is my Sony collection, which I imagine is not even going to be that long because I don't have that many. So, let's get started, shall we? Well, you're not going to be able to tell from this alone. I doubt even you can see from the case. But for those who can, or no, for those who can't, this is Crash Twin Sanity. Everyone can arguably say the last good Crash Bandicoot game before he went on a five year or so hiatus before the Insanity Trilogy. I got this used at a GameStop because this was literally the only way to buy it at this point because the only other way to get it was in a trilogy box and one of the games in it I already have for the GameCube which I just realized isn't even up here which was Crash Tag Team Racing for the GameCube. I don't know where that went. I assume downstairs. But that's besides the point. So yeah, Crash Twin Sanity. The last good Crash Bandicoot game before before Insanity Trilogy comes out. All those in the future who own the PS4, tell me how it is. I'd like to know personally. Alright, now here's an odd bunch. This is a PS1 game, not a PS2. But this was like the only way I could assure I get a decent quality. Final Fantasy anthology which contains Final Fantasy 5 and Final Fantasy 6. I've heard that the translators for the PS1 version isn't that good. I don't know, I guess it's because of Ferris, but she was raised a pirate so it makes sense for her dialogue to be like a pirate. That's just me personally. As for 6, I don't know how it is, so I'm just got to wait and see. Speaking of Final Fantasy, I bet you a lot of people are excited for the upcoming HD release. Final Fantasy XII. Yeah, this is the collector's edition that I just happened to find and I just picked it up right there and then. Which has bonus DVD features that don't really do anything, really. But yeah, this is the hard case for it. No instruction manual, sadly, but that doesn't matter. You got the both discs right there. And yeah. And, huh, ironically enough, it was $11.99 when I picked it up. Just one penny short of being 12 And, yeah, just in time, too, because Final Fantasy XII is getting a remaster on the PS4. And hopefully PC. And they somehow made a certain character hotter with her high-definition model. Don't know how they did that good on them, though. In the future, tell me how it went. Next game... Jack and Dexter. Yeah, I own the PS2 version. And, yeah, it's, it was pre-owned, but it was cheap. I think it was during, like, the whole buy two, get one free thing. Something along those lines. And, yeah, it's Jack and Dexter. Everyone says it's, like, the best, one of the better platformers from Naughty Dog that decided to become more developed. And the sequel, Jack and Dexter 2. And... Yeah, again, I think this was part, part during the collection. Oh, this has even got the instruction manual, too. Nice. I really didn't get far into Jack and Dexter 1. I need to, though. And, well, one thing at a time, I suppose. My backlog is huge. Unfortunately, I did have Ratchet and Clank, but that game didn't. Like, it just got to a certain point and just froze permanently at that one point. And I have a funny feeling Jack and Daxter might be that way. So, who knows. And well, you can't stand me with Kingdom Hearts. Well, here's the original Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 2. I actually have a story with this. My mom and brother went through, like, this testing thing where they went through, like, experiment things, I guess, when I was in school and they got paid for it, so we stopped by GameStop that afternoon, and we got my PS2, which is over there, buried under some controllers, and I got this with it. 
yeah, they got me Kingdom Hearts 1 while my brother got a PS2 and something else for it. And then that's pretty much when my PS2 collection started happening. And unfortunately, I have no means to have access of playing the 1.5 version, which has all the bonus content. It really makes me hope they do port it to something I can play on PC, Switch, whatever. Or until then, I just get a PS4 and just get the 1.5 and 2.5 collection. And speaking of Kingdom Hearts, here's Re Chain of Memories, a game I can never beat. All the Kingdom Hearts games I've never beaten, this is it because it is difficult. And yeah, this has also got the postcards in it too. But yeah, it's Chain of Memories and it's probably the hardest game out of the entire franchise, no matter what difficulty you set it to. But then again, I haven't. I was a dumb kid back then. And surprisingly, things become easier when you're an adult. That's a story for another time, from what I remember. Alright, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out of the way now. Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. I got this not too long after it came out. I was excited for it. Played it and beat it. I've beaten this one more than I have than the first one. And again, I just wish they would port 1.5 and 2.5, but I've ran long about that. So that's all the Kingdom Hearts games, people. Clap your hands. That's all we're gonna get. And now we're gonna go down a dark, gruesome path. Persona 3 FES for the PS2. I just remember having some spare cash one day online. I just say, I wanna get a Persona game. So I picked this one up, instead of four. Now, there's two ways to go about it. If you don't mind having the AI take control and then experiencing more story mode, get this version. But if you want to control the character yourself, get the PSP version. Alright. Oh yeah, here's Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, game doesn't work. I don't even know why I have it anymore, because it just freezes at a certain point. I don't know, maybe there's a way to fix it. I couldn't care less, though. Oh, is this a poster? Oh, wow, this is a poster. I think. Is, is it a poster? Yeah. I think this is a poster. Holy crap. That's pretty cool. Well, I guess I have a reason to keep it now. There's a poster in it. But yeah, I mean, it's just an Insomniac game that people really love, and I just couldn't get into it, really. Especially after that one point of froze. And now, here's the real Rayman 2. This is the one I personally prefer because it's got an open hub world and everything. I'm with Catechris on this one. Is this a poster too? No, that's the instruction manual. But I mean, you can get this on practically anything, but don't get the 3DS version because I Apparently, that's got terrible frame rate issues. I don't know how, because I'm pretty sure the 3DS is more powerful than the PS2. Whatever. And, yeah, there you go. And now, we have the only WWE I will ever consider owning SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. This is one of those cases where my friend brought it over, we played it, we had fun, and then I ended up getting it. I had custom character creation, and then you got like infinite skill points once you beat both story modes. I did that. And then I stopped getting friends coming over and stopped having people to play with in general. Yeah. Then I just realized that wrestling's just stupid and fake, so I'm never gonna get into it again. Alright, and now my friend's going to hate me for this, but... This is the game that kind of got me started into the LEGO series. LEGO Star Wars 1 for the PS2. And, yeah. This was... The st now see, this game definitely has first game I this. But all the other LEGO games kind of improved. But to this day, LEGO City is definitely the best one out of all of them. And I kind of hope they return to that game for its formula. Because just going through stages at this point in the linear progression, it's nice and all, but it's it's time to go more open with 
you know, just like with LEGO City, but at least with LEGO City, they actually were able to do their own thing, so I guess that's why it was the best one. And here's a sequel that's not fully 100% operational. I liked it for the fact that you can actually customize your own character. In fact, I don't think any other LEGO game ever had this feature ever again. And the reason why I say it's unbeatable is because when you're trying to speedrun the game to get the final power brick, which I got close to, it would just freeze at a point and it would just never continue. But it's just for that mode only because otherwise it worked perfectly fine. And yeah. As I said though, Lego City Undercover, best one. Alright, and now we're going back to more RPGs, Tales of the Abyss. The first and probably only Tales of game I will ever own, unless I somehow get my hands on Viseria. Because that one actually looks fun. Get the 3DS version and not this, because this has a lot of content removed that's been restored on the 3DS, and the load times are much better. And the only saving grace this game has. It actually does have a good story and character development, and it's also got tier. Well, that's besides the point. And... Now we have a classic to me, personally. I love The Nightmare Before Christmas, one of my personal favorite anime movies. And they gave it a sequel on the PS2, Devil May Cry style, hence why it was made by Capcom. I don't know if you can see their name on there. Well, it's on the back. And, yeah, this is a great game. It's kind of cool how they reorchestrated the soundtrack from the movie to match the lyrics of the current situation. It's a great game overall, and it's, it's definitely made with Devil May Cry engine, but it's really, really good. I know nothing about the Game Boy Advance game, though, so I don't even care. We're almost done, believe it or not. Here we have Ultimate Spider-Man. It's an open-world Spider-Man game on the PS2 where you control both Spider-Man and Venom. And my friend, a friend of mine had this a long time ago, and I somehow ended up getting it. I guess my mom saw me enjoying this game and she got it for me. I don't know, I just remember somehow getting it. And it was a really good open-world game. Probably my first one ever, too. And my last PS2 game doesn't even have a box art, Beautiful Joe 2. It's a sequel to Beautiful Joe, and it's great and all until I got stuck at a certain point and I just kind of put the game down for good. And that's my PS2 collection. I went in and off there, but I just got a few PSP games I want to cover too. Alright, this time I'm actually going to remember to include the download stuff the download data I actually got, because I actually don't have that many on there, on like the 3DS. First we have arguably the best storyline of Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core. Only thing I didn't like about it was how your level ups were RNG based with the slot reels instead of just experience points. That's my only flaw with the game, but it's a great game otherwise. And yeah, Crisis Core people. Then we have this is Dio Final Fantasy 1. It's I thought it was okay for the first few hours, and I just kinda got bored with it. Especially since most of the characters were spiked up in difficulty and just a pain in the ass to play through in the end. It's not a bad game. I just didn't get that far into it before I stopped caring, and then they made the sequel, which I imagine is much better, but this is... I just didn't care at that point. I heard apparently though there's a this is a Dia arcade game that we might get soon for the PS4, so keep an eye on it, people. And now... We have Final Fantasy 1, the 20th Anniversary Edition. Yep, I had... I got this, so I'm not getting the Game Boy Advance version anytime soon. Intro Cinematics... It's the... It's just how the game started. You're the... You're the light, choose your four heroes, go save the world. It's all you need for a plot. It's not a bad one at that. And, well, I know a lot of you guys don't like this. I think it's good. Though. Final Fantasy II 
where it was the first story to be rebels against the in evil empire, you must stop him from taking over the world. And he was the conqueror of heaven and, he heaven and hell, so I've been told. I don't know, I thought this was kind of like the early days of, say, the Elder Scrolls game, where you have to use something X amount of times before you get good at it, you know? It's kind of like what the Elder Scrolls did. I can imagine, though, that it's, it's very slow-paced and grindy, though, and that's why they never stuck with this formula ever again. Which is understandable. I think one of these days I will do a playthroughs of these, but... And now here's one playthrough I am going to do one day, but I have to get something working here without OBS being a bitch. God's Eater Burst. I'm doing the PC version. It's a monster hunter from Namco on the PC where you hunt down monsters with giant swords that go nom nom nom. And its enemies all fuck, but it's amazing too. I can't wait to play the PC version, but again, I need to get Bandicam or something because OBS does not want to work with me here. Does this have the instruction manual too? Oh, it does. Sweet. Alright. And, okay, well, I lied about Kingdom Hearts 2 being the last one. Here's Birth by Sleep. The game that really started it all, and not really won, even though one was made first. You play as three different characters, and then it leads to the events of Kingdom Hearts 1, blah blah blah. And then there's Ven, yeah. Don't get the PSP version, get 2.5, because this game is, this version is very flawed. It's good, but the low times and the frame rate drops are just awful. Just get the PS4 and the PS3 version. Save yourself a heartache. And now I'm going to go over some download titles just to get that quick and done. I got Little Big Planet when it was free because PSN was having server issues. It's still larger during Christmas. Makes you wonder why you're paying for it. I thought it was an okay 2D platformer, but nothing I could really stick with because there was just like almost no, you know, challenge to it, like Super Mario Brothers. I owned the Spiral Trilogy on there for the, from the PlayStation 1 downloads. I'm more of a Spiral guy than a Crash guy, I'm sorry. I even have the bobblehead of, the, of Spiral the Dragon. I also own Lords of... Lord of Arcana, which was a Monster Hunter game with a dark atmosphere. I mean, for God's sake, you, you can just slam dunk a goblin and guts and blood go all over the place. But not like actual guts, like chunks of meat, if you will. It's not like ugh, disgusting violent, but it's pretty violent. In a good way. And I do own a physical copy of this, but it's in my PSP currently. I own a game called Gun and it's a tactics RPG that has like 17 status elements in the game. I haven't gotten far, but I just remember watching HC Bailey play for a while and they're like, you know what, this game looks pretty good. I'm gonna go get it myself and play it. I only got the game, I didn't get the box or anything for it. I also got this one weird RPG for the PSP. I just remember not getting far in it because you had to hire people to join your party. But then, somehow, for some reason, everything got more expensive, and I don't know why. So anyways, as far as I can tell, this might not be the finale of my video game collection. But, in the end, if I don't do the PC, it's been a great ride. And I'll see you on the next video of whatever I do. It might be the unboxing of this guy at 5. Yeah. I've been keeping it quiet until now, but since it's coming out next Tuesday, there you go. I don't know what I'm going to get, because I ordered it all mine. I'll just have to wait and see when I can get it. I've been loving using this kickstand, too. It's been opening up a whole bunch of possibilities, but for now, we'll just have to wait and see how I'm going to use it in the future. So until then, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.